Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. A new report argues that an energy transition that is aligned with the 1.5 degrees Celsius climate pathway will have a net positive effect on job creation. Chair and Screamer joins me to discuss the implications for South Africa. Who published the report and what scenarios does it present? It was published by the International Renewable Energy Agency, and it basically looks at two scenarios. One based on the current plans of governments around the world to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions, and one that looks at a scenario where governments change or higher their level of ambition to ensure that temperature rises are not above 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels this century. So it looks at those two scenarios and it does it in the context of climate talks that are going to be taking place later this year in Glasgow, Scotland, where there's a big push to try and raise the level of ambition from what we got out of Paris, uh, where it was about basically a two degree temperature rise this century to reducing that to 1.5 degrees. What does it say specifically about jobs? Well, the good news on the jobs front is that a more ambitious approach to reducing carbon emissions, this 1.5 degree scenario, will actually yield more jobs in the short term as well as in the long term than a scenario that uh, exists or prevails under government policies currently. So by 2030, this will be a, a sort of a peak at about 137 million jobs in the energy sector, which is a major scale up from about 58 million currently. And compared to the current scenarios uh, in place, these, this will be about 26 million more jobs than under the current scenarios that will be created under that. And then by these will taper, obviously, because more fossil fuel jobs will be lost from 2030 onwards. And by 2050, there'll still be 121 million jobs in uh, the energy sector, much of it in the renewable energy sector. And initially, much of, much of the jobs are in construction and installation, uh, with solar PV being a, an important player in this. But over time, we'll see more and more jobs emerging in operations and maintenance. What could this mean for South Africa? Well, the good news for South Africa is that, there, as the report shows, there's more net jobs with a renewables-based system than there is with a coal-based system. So that's good because South Africa is in the process of transitioning from its coal heavy system to one that eventually will be far more renewables led. And over the period, we need to uh, use that and leverage that to create as many jobs as possible because we know that South Africa is in a deep jobs crisis. Uh, beside the IRENA report, this has also been confirmed in a recent CSIR report, which really focused only on the solar industry. But it found that a lot of jobs would be creating created in the construction uh, and development of these uh, renewables plants, solar plants specifically over the next 10 years as we phase out our coal fired power stations and that will accelerate uh, beyond 2030 in South Africa's case. And then obviously uh, as time goes on, there'll be more operations and maintenance jobs, which is key because those are the permanent jobs. What are some of the risks that will need to be considered? Well, we know that South Africa, the, the big buzzword is having this as a just transition. So we know we need to transition out of coal for a number of reasons, not least being economic. You know, the coal fleet has become unreliable, but it's also unsustainable from, a, uh, from an economic perspective. We are a very intensive trading nation. And as a trading nation, we know that there's going to be more and more barriers put up in the world against carbon dense products and services or products in particular, and there's going to be order adjustments. So we need to make this transition from an economic perspective. We also need to make it from an environmental perspective. We've, we emit far too much carbon for the size of the economy or we are. The, uh, the lucky, the fortunate position we're in is we've got good wind and solar resources, which we need to now tap into. So the, uh, overall, there's a lot of positivity around this. But there are risks. We know that uh, there's a, a large number of uh, mine workers, coal mine workers, uh, linked to Eskim and link, linked to coal exports. And we know there are also coal communities that surround these power stations and these mines. And these new jobs are not necessarily going to be in the same uh, location geographically. So we need to find a way of either cushioning those communities and workers during this transition or giving priority to those communities and workers in the job creation uh, that will arise from this transition. 
Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.